Tops Professional Charge Table Setup. This course will walk through setting up the A1 charge table for recurring charges. We will go over the different calculation methods for recurring charges and late fees and also review the charge table utilities. To access the charge tables in Tops, click AR, Apply Charges, and Charge Tables. Because this is the first charge table we're setting up for this community, the charge table window opens up with table number A1 selected and the title of the table preset. We can, however, change the title or name of this recurring charge. The title entered here will be how the charge is named in the owner's AR history and on owner statements and invoices. I'm going to rename this charge and call it Association Fee. Some other typical names include Maintenance Fee, condo fee, and common charges. Next, we'll need to set the frequency of the charge, or how often the charge should be applied to the owner accounts. Our options include monthly, bi-monthly, or every two months, quarterly, every three months, semi-annually, twice a year, and annually. This particular charge will be applied monthly. We next need to choose the calculation method for this charge. I'll go over each of the different options. The first option is flat dollar amount. See this table at the bottom of the window? You can set up 99 different flat dollar amounts in this table and then assign the charges to the appropriate owners. Our next option is percent of property value. Note how this column title in our table changed from amount to percent value. Here, you would enter the percent for each category that will be multiplied by the value entered in the property record for each home. The number is entered as a fractional amount, so 5% would be entered as 0 .05. Next, we have square footage times rate. Again, notice how this column title in our table has changed to dollar per square foot. Just as the name says, in this column, for each category, you would enter the dollar amount that is multiplied by the square footage entered in the property record for each home. Our next calculation method is total amount times percent ownership. Note that this column in our table is now renamed back to amount. Here you would enter the dollar amount that is multiplied by the percentage ownership or ratio entered in the property record for each home. It's important to note that the dollar amount entered in here should match the frequency. So if the fees are charged monthly, then this would be the annual budgeted assessment income amount for the community divided by 12. For the percentage of property value, square footage times rate, and total amount times percent ownership calculation methods, you can choose to have tops round to the nearest dollar. This is helpful when the board or the owners don't like dealing with those pesky cents. Our last calculation method is Enter Amount in Property Record. This column in our table has now been changed to Not Applicable. This is because we won't be using the table to assign the recurring charge amounts to the owners. The charge amounts will be entered directly into each owner's property record. It is recommended that you try to avoid using this calculation method because when the fee amounts change, each owner will need to be updated individually. The other calculation methods allow you to just update the few amounts on the table, saving time at the end of the year. Additionally, this calculation method can only be used for the A1 charge table. The association fee for this community is a flat dollar amount based on the floor plan of the unit, so we'll select flat dollar amount as our calculation method. The late fee method has a couple of calculation options as well. The first option is flat dollar amount. Choosing this method will allow you to enter a late fee dollar amount for each charge category. This dollar amount can be the same for each category or it can be different. The other late fee calculation method is percentage of unpaid balance. This method will multiply the percentage entered here by the owner's current balance for this charge to calculate the late fee. Again, you can have a different percentage for each charge category. Numbers entered in this column are whole numbers, so to calculate a 10% late fee, you would enter 10 in this column. 
Tops can charge an owner both a late fee and an interest charge, so often communities will set the late fee method to flat dollar amount and then use the interest application to charge an additional percentage. This community does not do that, however, so we'll leave the late fee calculation method as percentage of unpaid balance. These two fields are updated automatically when charges are applied to the owners. When you set up the charge table, you can enter initial dates into these fields or you can leave them blank. Our next two fields, GL Income Account and GL Receivable Account, have been automatically filled in based on our initial AR setup. If either or both of these codes are incorrect, though, or need to be changed, then this can easily be done by clicking on the drop-down arrow next to the code. This will bring up the Chart of Accounts listing. Now, all we need to do is search for the correct account. As we type, you can see that TOPS automatically limits the list to items that match our search term. Once we've found the correct code, we can just click on the code, and then click OK to complete the selection. OK, now it's time to fill in the table portion of our charge table. This community has three different charge amounts, which are based on the unit's floor plan. To set up our first amount, we'll click on the description area of Category 1. Then, we'll type in a description for this category. This description is only used to ensure that the appropriate category is assigned to each owner. Remember, it's the title of the table itself that is seen on the owner histories, statements, and invoices. Because our charges are based on the floor plan, the description of this charge should match that floor plan. In this case, it's for all units that have two bedrooms and one bath. Next, we'll enter the monthly amount of this charge, which is $200. The late fee percentage is next. This community seems to be a bit strict. They charge a 25% late fee on the outstanding balance. If the community does not charge a late fee, then you would leave this column blank. Next we have our minimum liability. This is the dollar amount that needs to be outstanding on this charge in order for the late fee to be assessed. I'm setting the minimum liability to be equal to one month's fee. You could set this to be any dollar amount that you'd like. If the association charges a late fee, no matter how much is outstanding, then you would leave this column blank, and then anyone who owes a portion of this fee will be charged a late fee when it is past due. Now, we'll set up our second charge category. This will be for all two-bedroom, two-bath units. This type of unit has a $250 monthly charge. The late fee is the same, 25%. And the minimum liability is again equal to one month's charge amount, so $250. And finally, our third charge amount, which is for the three bedroom, two bath units. Their monthly charge amount is $300. The late fee is again 25%. And the minimum liability is also $300, matching their monthly fee amount. Okay, now let's talk about these last two columns on the table that we've been ignoring up to this point. The ratio column relates to charges that are based on the percentage of ownership or ratio of each unit. The stop date column is used for charges that are not perpetual, meaning at some point the owners will no longer need to pay this charge. Typically, this is used for special assessments. In order to enter a date into the stop date column, you must set your charge table to be temporary, you would do that up here. Notice, though, that the ability to set this table to temporary is grayed out. This is because the A1 table is always used for the regular association fee, which never ends. Any other table, C1 through C9, can be set as temporary charges. This charge table is now completely set up, but there are a few other items on this screen that we should discuss. The first is the Future Charges button down at the bottom. Future Charges allows you to enter next year's charge amount on the table once it's been approved. This means that as soon as the board approves a new budget, you can pull up your charge table, click on Future Charges, and enter the effective date and dollar amount of next year's fee. This also means that you will no longer be rushing to update the charge tables with the new amounts at the end of the year.
The other item that I want to talk about here is the charge table utilities. The charge table utilities are very helpful. The first utility, Activate Table Using Existing Table, will allow you to set the charge categories for each owner to match the categories from a previous table. What this means is if we were to create another charge table where the charge distribution is also based on the floor plan type, then rather than having to update each owner with the new category appropriate for their type for this charge, we would just have TOPS automatically assign them the category based on the table of our choosing. It is important to note that when you create the new table for this new charge, that you enter the categories in the same order as the table that you want to use for your assignment. Our next utility, Make All Owners Same Charge Category, does just that. It assigns one category to all of the owners in the community. This is useful if you only have one charge amount on your table. Then, you don't have to go into each owner account to assign that category. The next utility, Update Owner Percentages, refers back to that ratio column on our charge table. And our last utility, Move Next Year Charge Amounts to Current, will do just that. It will take your future charge amounts and make them the current amounts. Okay, I want to go back to our Make All Owners Same Charge Category utility for a minute, because it's not just good for tables with only one category. It's also great if you happen to have one category that has more owners in it than any other. For example, in this community, about half of the units are two-bedroom, two-bath units. So, rather than having to assign all of the categories to the owners individually, I'll just assign them all to the two-bedroom, two-bath category. This way, I'll only have to go into half of the units to reassign them to the correct category. To do that, we'll just save our charge table and close out of the charge table screen. Then we'll click on Owner, Maintain, pull up our first owner whose category we need to change, click on the Recurring Charges button, and change this owner's category from 2, which is for 2 bedroom 2 bath units, to 1, which is for 2 bedroom 1 bath units. Then click OK to complete the selection, and click OK again to save this change. This completes our TOPS Professional Charge Table Setup course. Thank you.